The treasures in heaven and the treasures in earth are different. You know, one fades away, one crumbles, one gets eaten up, rusted, must attack it, and it's not there anymore. The other one lasts for eternity when you put that treasure away. Hi guys! Okay, so I'm at home right now and I'm heading to youth right now, which is the first youth of the year and the first cell of the year. And so there was a comment about asking what EXO was and if you're curious you can go back to the first vlog to see the comment but I'll explain it right here right now. EXO actually is our cell name and the X in EXO means the cross that Jesus died and the O in EXO means the unity that we have. Um, so we put X before O because with Jesus Christ we can actually have unity within the cell and it's just one of the main goals that we have for the year. But uh, I'll see. You, I'll catch you later because I'm gonna go now, and you see the journey towards um youth and all that. And you and we'll. I'll give you a sneak peek of like, sneak peek of like, the youth that we're in, which is really huge. But like, I hope you guys don't mind. And yeah, catch you guys later. Bye. for treasures in heaven, that you are willing to give it up for the things that are eternal. So he's not, like I say, he's not going to count everything and he's not looking at that monetary thing, he's just looking at your heart to show that you are ready to sacrifice for him, to, ready to sacrifice for the things that don't fade away. As you guys begin to give up more of yourself, you begin to draw closer to God, right? Because as you begin to invest your treasures, like it says in Matthew, when you invest your treasures, your heart will follow. That's where you will also find your heart. If you begin to invest in God, this is the confusing part, so listen. When you invest in God, yeah, that's where you put your treasures. Where your treasures are, your heart will follow that. So now if God looks at you as a Christian and looks at your character and examines your heart, what does he find? Because you put your treasures in Christ, your treasures in eternal things and your heart follows, and then he examines your heart, he'll find himself, right? He'll find a Christian character, he'll find things that he knows. He'll find generosity and love and all these things that are of God. 
So if, as long as you are putting your treasures in Him, the benefit is that you're going to turn, in, your heart is going to change for Him, your heart is going to be more like Him, because God's currency isn't money. His currency isn't dollars. His currency is virtues in your heart. He's not looking to see this exact amount. He's looking to see how you've given it, okay? You know, God loves a cheerful giver. It's because He does, right? He doesn't want you to give out of remorse or hate. He wants you to grow away from the things that fade away and grow into the things that are eternal. Right? He doesn't want you to waste time being on this earth and putting your hope in wealth when you can put your hope in Him. The offering is more than just putting money into a bucket, okay? It's testing to see where do you put your security, where do you put your treasure. Are you putting it in your wealth? Are you putting it in the earth or are you putting it in God? Are you putting it in the things that do not fail? It's so much more than just throwing money away. It's developing character. It's growing your heart away from this place and closer to God. And that's what every Christian wants, right? That's what we're trying to do. So something as simple as putting your investment into the right place can bring your heart closer to God. I pray that you bless these people's heart tonight to know that they have security in you, Lord. They have wealth in you. They do not need to look for wealth in the world, Father. They have enough in you because you're the one that provides, Father, and you're the one that will be with them and for them, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that they have all and utmost assurance that you will be with them forever, Lord. Let them not waste time on the earthly, Father, but let them put, let them put their efforts into the eternal. Lord, I just pray this in your most precious name, Father. Amen. Amen. That's right, Ding. <laughs> I'm all sweaty and I'm Lord, I thank you for this session. Lord, I thank you for um, dropping that that whole year ahead of us. Lord, I know that today, this today, this year will be a good year because you're with us. Lord, Lord, I teach us to pursue you overall and teach us to learn to walk uh, with you as well. Lord. So, Lord, I pray for this session, Lord, that you speak through me, and whatever comes out of my mouth will not be of me. Lord, I pray that you that you hide me behind the cross and really lead the session. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We have a lot of people, and, and not just you guys. I compare myself to a lot of people. I was like, oh, this person's already finished university. I changed my course three times. You know, like I did. I changed my course twice, and I'm upset that like three years. So, um, I, I, you start comparing yourself. Like, oh, this person's already here, uh, but 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 I'm only here, kind of thing. And when you compare yourself, you start to cloud the clarity that God's already called for you. You start thinking, oh look, I'm going to run that person race. And you take your eyes off God and you start chasing the other person instead of chasing for God. And I think that's the biggest mistake as Christians. You know when you start a race, it says on your mark. It didn't say it's on their mark. Not, not someone else's mark, but on your mark. You run your race that God has set up for you as well. So at the end of the day, there's no one that's going to be a better version of, of you. And, and sometimes you guys might say, oh, I'm just going to be a Woolworth server, or I'm going to be a hairstylist. No, you're not just a hairstylist. You're a hairstylist for God, and you're going to show them how God is going to look like, how Jesus looks like when you cut someone's hair. I know that sounds so stupid, but, but you're basically going to be an ambassador of God, ambassador of Jesus down there. And I believe that God has set out a, a, a calling for all of you guys. And I don't want you guys to live your whole life just kind of compared. And I think the worst thing about comparison, and, and, and I think comparison is one of the biggest things that really hinders our faith as well. And, and you know what actually had, like, got Satan sent down to hell, basically, was when he tried to compare himself to God. He was just like, I'm better than God, I'm going to always step his throne. And that's when he got sent down. But it's when he was trying to compare himself to God. And, and you know what Satan's job is to do, man? He's going to steal, he's going to kill, and he's going to try to rob from you. And just like he's gonna rob your, your, he's just trying to, he's just gonna try to rob your, your calling. He's gonna try to steal your calling, trying to like pretty much kill whatever God has set up for you guys. So at the end of the day, like it, it might not look 
Like your path is the most beautiful path ever. But trust me, I know that God has set up that path for you so perfectly. Even when it doesn't look like it's perfect, it's so perfect and unique to you. And it's already set up like the line for you to even reach His calling. And yes, maybe the destination is a bit one or two years later, but because He set up all these things for you and you understand why He set up for you at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, like you can't compare their highlights with your behind the scenes. Like no one's, everyone has their own struggle. Everyone has their own race to run. Everyone has their own story as well. But we forget that the best thing is not necessarily the lane that one forget God wants us to walk as well. God cares about who you are, not what you do. Preparation is real. Like God actually prepares you into your next seasons. Like sometimes you don't understand why you're struggling what you're struggling. And you're just like, oh, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through this. And then when you actually reach the end, you're just like, oh, I actually see why God put me through all this. And it was to prepare me for my calling. Don't despise the things that you despise. I think so often that we, when we go through things, we're just like, oh, I don't want to go through this right now. And I think like when I was going through things and like struggles in my past, especially in high school, I asked God, like, why are you putting me through this? And only to today, I, I realized that God's put me through this so I can build character, so I can be a better leader for you guys. I can actually share my life with you guys. I can actually say, oh, I actually understand where you're coming from. So don't despise the thing that you despise. I think the is pretty much done. What is up, guys? Welcome to another cell vlog. Today it's week two currently. School's been great. We have my friend Willie right here. Send him to the vlog. <laughs> After kinetic chills, that's how we do it. <laughs> Special guest, Evan Fong. Yo, where's Audrey, man? We chilling. We chilling. 